Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Today's Friday, November 20th. Hope you had a good week of trading. Uh, don't forget, next week is Thanksgiving, so we're gonna have a little bit of a short week. Taking a look at the S&P 500, uh, obviously after the after the election, uh, things kind of just trended higher and uh, uh, implied volatility just ac absolutely got decimated. Uh, I think the, the path of least resistance for stocks is still to the upside. Obviously, the S&P hit an all-time high a couple weeks ago. Uh, looking at the NASDAQ, NASDAQ did not. So NASDAQ trading right here hit a high back here in August. Uh, so it's been uh, tech has been a little bit weaker since then. However, the Russell small caps, financials primarily, travel companies, uh, with the new potential vaccine coming out, uh, the Russell's been on fire to the upside with very little pullback. So hopefully we get a little spike in implied volatility uh, into next week or the next couple weeks to add some more positions. We are a little bit light in our allocations overall, and that's okay. We don't want to force anything. Uh, but uh, would like some uh, higher implied volatility to start layering in some new uh, short premium. So until then, we'll, we'll continue to uh, trade our normal strategies. Uh, you know, iron ducks are still okay in low implied volatility. Obviously, even better when implied volatility is high, but still very, very doable. We'll still continue to do uh, some weekly double calendars. And, um, and, and start to implement some other directional strategies and, and other things. We've also got, don't forget, I, I mentioned last week, but December 17th is our Vertigo Strategy web class. So make sure you get that on your calendar at 4 p.m. We'll be sending out notices and, and uh, links to get signed up and all that. But just as an early uh, notification, make sure December 17th is on your calendar. And with that, uh, let's start with the day trading results for the week. So nice week of day trading, uh, starting with the Mighty 90, plus a little over $3,000 just on the on the Mighty 90 strategy. Uh, four green days. Didn't trade today. Uh, I was unavailable to, to day trade. The only thing I did today was I put on one uh, pairs trade in NASDAQ versus Russell, booked 140 there. For the week, just two pairs trades, minus 57 bucks. And then on the runners, I uh, had a little red day on Monday. The rest of the days were green for plus 654 on the week in runners. So uh, if we go to the summary page here, so you can see for the week total, $3,611 for the week. Uh, total day trades since the end of August, basically 1st of September, uh, we're up a little over $27,000, so going excellent. I, I talked about this in the day trading recap video too, so if you haven't seen that uh, on the Facebook uh, group page or or via the uh, the recap page, um, we, we've, we have gotten back into the swing of things on the Mighty 90. You can see there's periods where we had a really low win percentage, 45%, 45%, 50%, 50%. It was really hurting our performance. And I, I went back to see what was I doing at the beginning that was making it so much more successful than it had been, you know, for, for a period. And and it was it it come to find out, it was a lot about the management. I was I was almost trying to manage the mighty 90s like they were runners by cutting the losses really quick. And, and just being done. And that was really lowering the win percentage and in turn, lowering the profits on the Mighty 90 strategy. So even though we were rocking it out on the runners, uh, the, the Mighty 90 had some had some down weeks, down days, and a lower percent win rate. And so you can see now, last week we we're up to 70% win rate, this week up to 80% win, uh, win rate. Uh, even though last week was very minimally uh, positive, that was really due to just one or two uh, bad losses, but now you can see we're back, back in the swing of things. So I'm excited about that. Um, you know, that, that's why, that's why it's really important to track this stuff. So you can kind of go back and look and, and take notes on your trades and things like that. So you understand what you were doing when things were going good and what you're doing when things are going bad. So you can fix those things. And that's, that's part of trading. So, uh, really happy about that. Looking forward to more opportunities here in the coming weeks. Uh, we will be, We'll be offline Wednesday, Thursday, Friday uh, next week for, for Thanksgiving, but we will be live streaming Monday and Tuesday. So if you get a chance, make sure you drop in there, having a lot of fun, making some money, and uh, make sure you make sure you stop by. 
Uh, okay, jumping into the alerts, uh, starting with Monday uh, the 16th, SPX did a weekly double calendar. Did this one in the AM with the AM options. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend some time talking about this because there was some confusion uh, from some folks in the community. And I had a little confusion myself. So I'll, I'll share that with you as well. So uh, added that, we already had one on that we used the, uh, the PM options. Uh, this was with the AM. And so when we get to the close, I'll, I'll talk more about that. Uh, QCOM did a closing trade. We had this on as a post earnings long call and uh, ended up taking it off, booked a profit over 30%, not quite the 50% profit we were looking for, uh, but we were able to get out of that profitable. Let's take a look at a chart of QCOM, show you what we did there. So we had, uh, let me zoom in here. So we had earnings popped up. Uh, as price came down, we got long in this area here for a continuation to the upside. It chopped around for a couple of days and then and then dropped when the market had a big down move, popped right back up. And uh, on this day here, we went ahead and just closed that out and, and booked a profit. Uh, I, was, I was looking for that move uh, back above the highs of uh, just after earnings. It did end up getting there. Uh, a couple days ago, but we didn't wait around. I, th I think it was this day actually that we got out uh, right near the uh, right near that high high part. So could have booked a little bit more, but that's okay. We still booked a nice profit, nonetheless. XLK rolling adjusting trade. So this is one of our uh, short uh, short delta plays. It's a long put vertical in XLK. This one was uh, in November, so we needed to roll out. So instead of rolling out to December with 32, we just went ahead and rolled out to January with uh, 60 days. So let's take a look at XLK. It's not too far off from where we rolled it. Yeah, we're up about 75 bucks since that roll. So we're gonna continue to hold that for short delta. Speaking of short delta, we're, we're a little less than one to one on our short delta versus our theta ratio. And so I like that position. I'm not looking to load up on short delta at this point. I still think we have more upside in the market, but we still want to keep a little bit of short delta in case we do get a, a down move. We will benefit from that. Uh, next trade, opening trade in Tesla. So we did a an iron duck in Tesla. Uh, they there is a news came out that Tesla was going is now going to be included in the S and P 500, and so the stock shot up 10% in one day. Uh, I assumed there was going to be additional upside, so we put on an iron duck uh, with the with the potential that hey, if you know if this thing does roll over, we have this huge buffer to the downside way down. Actually, where's our downside break even? Uh, 402. So way down here uh, is our is our downside break even. But if this thing continues to rip higher, we have no risk and we can make a little bit with the big profit. So. Here's the day it jumped up, and then sure enough, the next day ripped higher again and ripped higher again, and it's kind of taking a little bit bit of a breather today. Uh, but this thing is is way up the beak. Market's closed right now, so don't pay attention to this goofy uh, P and L line. But we're way up the beak. Not quite enough to book it yet, but early next week, if price stays up here or even goes higher, we'll just close that out early and book beak profit. These expire next Friday, so more than likely we'll be taking this off on Monday or Tuesday. Next trade was NVIDIA. So we did an earnings iron duck in NVIDIA. Uh, uh, they, they announced earnings. Uh, the price opened up right at the, basically at the same same spot. So not a big up move, not a big down move, just opened up right where it closed. Uh, so right inside of our beak. We closed it out today and booked beak profit. Uh, I was hoping we were going to have a down move and we'd have a chance to get into the... Uh, into the duck head, but didn't quite get there. Let me take a look at NVIDIA. Oops, NVDA. Let's take a look at where that ended up. The market's closed now. Yeah, so it still ended up right in the beak. Just needed a little bit more down movement to get in that head, just didn't quite get there. Uh, so we still booked, uh, what is that, 120 bucks uh, of profit on NVIDIA. Uh, SPX closing trade. So we had one of our weekly double calendars. We closed that out on Thursdays. I think we booked right at $100 on that one. So a small profit. And then Spy Iron Condor, we had a we had a call vertical side left in November. Uh, November options were expiring this week. So we needed to close or roll that. We went ahead and just closed it out. 
I uh, didn't want to keep that short delta, so we just closed it. Still have a full iron condor in the Dece cycle, which we're getting ready to close as well. We're, uh, we're about at 40% of max profit, so we're giving it over the weekend, see if we can get a little bit more theta decay and book a little bit more profit on that one. ES, rolling adjusting trade. So this was our long put vertical in ES. Uh, this one was also expiring, so we rolled it out to the 56 days to expiration. Let's take a look at ES. Uh, you can see prices come down a little bit, so we're up about 160 bucks since we did that roll. Uh, looking for some more downside action to benefit that one. SPX Iron Duck. So we opened up another duck in SPX as the market was coming down today. So we've got two Iron Ducks in SPX. Uh, here's, the, here's the one that we just put on. And price is hanging out right in the beak, pretty close to where we put it. And then this one, and this was, and that was with 14 days to expiration. The, the other one that we have on has five days left, so we'll take, we'll get out of this next week. Hopefully, if we get a little bit of downside action, we still have a chance to get into the duck head uh, for some for max profit. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, SPX closing trade weekly double calendar. Okay, so this is the one I want to spend a couple minutes on. Uh, this is the one that we we closed out today. So, a couple things. One, the front week had AM settled options. So, what does that mean? Well, if you if you notice in the SPX option chain, uh, most of them just don't say anything, right? Uh, they just say the number, the weeklies. But every once in a while, every month, once a month, you have these AM settled options, and these are noted both in Tastyworks and Thinkorswim, and I would assume most brokers where it it, 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 uh, it defines whether that's an AM option cycle. And what that means is that instead of these options expiring Friday after the market closes, they expire Friday before the market opens. But what confuses a lot of people is it's not the, the settlement price is not based on the on the open of the SPX. It's actually based on the open of all the 500 uh, S&P 500 stocks. And so it doesn't actually settle until usually about 9.30 or 10 a.m. Central Time. And the, and the, the way to, the easiest way to figure out what that settlement price is, is you go to the ticker SET and it just, it's kind of a goofy looking chart, but it just notes that on uh, with that little notch there. So this one uh, expired at 3578.48. Okay, so that's where they expired this morning. And so we we basically, the intent was to close this uh, yesterday. And and then, you know, based on where the price was a little bit later in the day, I was, gonna, I was waiting until later in the day, where price was, I was like, you know what, we could probably book quite a bit more profit by just leaving it on letting these front ones expire, we still have all day Friday uh, to to exit the long options. And so that's what we did. As soon as as soon as this got settled, we uh, we closed out our long options. Now, the confusion was from a couple of people, a they they were trying to close it first thing in the morning. And when you try to remember a in fact, let me just do this. Remember, a double calendar is made up of a short strangle in the front week and a long strangle in the back week. We're selling the options in the front week uh, that typically have a higher um, implied volatility and we're buying the ones in the back week which have a lower implied volatility. Now, notice that's not the case in this current seven and 10 day cycle, which is why we did not put on a new weekly double calendar today or yesterday. If you look at this, the front week implied volatility is lower than the back week. And so we, we just skipped. We didn't, we just didn't do it because it doesn't set up right. But let me show you, I'm, I'm going to use this as an option anyway, because this is kind of the, typically the time frame that we put these on. If I go in here to the seven day and I sell a strangle, I'm going to, I'm going to break this down into two different parts because I think it'll help you understand, uh, 3510 is the puts. So I'm just doing this as an example. This isn't going to look right because uh, these, the skew in these options isn't quite right, but, and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to buy, well, actually what I'll do is I'll just create, analyze opposite trade, change this to the 30th. Okay. So that's the normal situation of what we would do, right? 
we would sell the front week, buy the back week. Now, again, it doesn't look symmetrical. The market's closed, plus the skew is off, so it's not going to look quite right. But my point is, for the one that expired today that we managed, so essentially, if we look, we had the short strangle, and so this one we let expire, and it expired for basic, almost max profit. Now, one of the things that I... I was in my mind, it was expiring for max profit, but it actually expired like right here. So just off the max profit. So we, we, uh, we didn't get, uh, we didn't get 100% of max profit. We, uh, it was like $152 less than max profit because it expired right there. So we, so, so that settled and, and those options disappeared out of our account. We, we booked that almost max profit. Then what we had is our, Long strangle, which still had the rest of the day before those options exp uh, expired. Uh, actually, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, no, that was the yeah November 23rd. So it actually had until Monday until those options expired. Yeah, okay. So, um, so what happened then is is on our short strangle, those expired for basically max profit, and then the price went lower, which increased our profit on the long options. And so by that happening, uh, we ended up booking a really nice profit. I originally I was, I was calculating and I was like, there's no way we got a loss. And as, and as I was, as I was doing that calculation, a couple of, a couple of our members in the community start posting, no, I, you know, I booked 700 bucks. I booked 800 bucks. And, and I went back and looked at, it. I was like, oh yeah, I, I'm not sure what I was looking at. I was, uh, I was calculating it incorrectly. So good of my community to keep me straight. Sometimes I need that. Um, and so anyway, booked, ended up booking right at $800 even on the trade. Now you do have some risk, right? I mean, it, it worked out really well where, where the, uh, the short ones, uh, booked basically max profit, like I said, right in this area. And then the long options, we got this down move, which gave us even more profit. Now the risk was if the market had moved higher and this, uh, theta really started decaying and the, and the peanut went down, we wouldn't have booked as much. But but based on where price was and the reason we kept it on until today was because we had that, that benefit of potentially booking uh, a lot more profit and it worked out well. So it was a little bit confusing. So I apologize for the confusion, but hey, if it, uh, if it books more profit, then it's probably worth it, right? Uh, we, 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 we're not going to make a practice of doing that. It was a pretty unique situation that I thought it made sense to do it in. Uh, if it was more centered or if it's up here to on the upper end of the, of the double calendar or something like that, or especially out of range, we would, we would never do that. Uh, so it was kind of a unique situation, but worked out well and uh, booked a nice profit. So there is your explanation. L let me know if you guys have any other questions. I know that's a little bit confusing if you're, if you're not used to that. And I know some people, because of that confusion, just completely stay away from AM options. And, and I don't think you need to do that. I think there's, uh, there's some opportunity. Typically the implied volatility is a little bit higher in the AM options. Uh, there's definitely some opportunities kind of like we, um, we took advantage of here today as well. So, uh, make sure you make sure you get to know those a little bit. All right, next trade, closing trade Nvidia. So here's that Nvidia earnings iron duck. We closed book beak profit and that's it. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at our other positions. Starting with ES, we've got this long put vertical. I showed you that up about 150 since that roll. Natty Gas, we've got this short strangle here. We're still managing. Prices come down a little bit this week, so it's kind of hanging out in the lower end of the range, but no need for adjustments at this point. Bonds are working really nice. Uh, nice move higher back into range. We're up over 2300 bucks. Since this roll, uh, we're going to look to potentially close this out next week and uh, book a profit overall after being in this trade for quite some time. Uh, let's go back and look at a chart of bonds and take a look here. Yeah, in this in this wild and crazy stuff, we got flushed out a couple times. But look at look at I mean, bonds have been really trading in a pretty narrow range overall, and by just kind of staying consistent managing, uh, making the adjustments as, as necessary, uh, we're able to get back to, um, we're able to get back to profits. Um, you know, took a few months, took a few cycles, but, uh, worked out really nicely. So we'll be closing that one out soon in Apple. Uh, 
So we're up about 66 bucks since we did this last roll, holding this for that short delta exposure, looking for some more downside there. Same thing with DE. This one's way out of range. Uh, I was looking to potentially roll this next week. We're already in December, which has 28 days. So we could certainly roll out to January. I was just going to, I'm going to give it into next week, see if we get a little downside movement before I roll that out, uh, but holding that for short delta as well. Same with DIA, uh, up a little bit since that last roll. Same with IWM, a little bit out of range on that one, so need a little bit of downside action to get back in there. Same with QQQs, need a little downside to get back into range on that one. SMH, we've got this short strangle that we've been managing, prices out of the range. If we look at just the put side, uh, you can see that uh, we've still got a little bit of premium left in there. I, I mentioned in the notes, if price continues a little bit higher, we will roll those puts up. Uh, but we're just going to give it a little bit more time, see if it comes back into range. Don't want to adjust too quickly. Uh, and this one is in December. So if we do roll, we will go ahead and just roll that out to January because we're under 60 days to expiration there. Uh, SPX, I mentioned we've got those two iron ducks, SPY, Tesla, and XLK. I can't remember if I mentioned this one. Yeah, we've got this long put vertical looking for some more downside to benefit that. So those are all the alerts. Those are all the positions. Hope everybody has a great weekend. Uh, we'll see you next week for a shortened week with the Thanksgiving holiday. Have a good one, everybody. Talk to you soon.